Hey y'all, Dr. B here. And I hope y'all doing well. <laughs> Today is a beautiful sunny day here in downtown Pittsburgh. And yes, I am on the job, but I just wanted to drop in and share some things. You know, I was sharing with my daughter. No, I'm sorry. A friend of mine who is my marketing analyst. And I did a video and I sent it to her. And you can find that in my story, right? And she was telling me, you know, she was telling me how she felt about the video. And I just said, okay. And she was like, just okay. After everything that I wrote, I realized within that moment that I didn't like who I am. Let me explain. I've been through a lot, right? And one of the big, it doesn't matter what I have accomplished, I still feel unaccomplished because I'm living on section eight, right? I have a PhD. I run my own organization. It's up and coming, but it's there. I'm a black immigrant woman. And when I look at myself and with everything that is happening around me, I'm like, how can I still be in this situation, God? Why do you want me to share this aspect of my life? Everybody share their success story. This is not a success story for me. And that's how I've been looking at it. But what is success? And what is a success story? And that's what I've been asking myself. And I started crying because I was like, God, I did what I needed to do. I came to a country. I created an organization. I went back to school. I educated myself. Still couldn't get a job that I wanted. A job that I think would have been sustaining to me. You know, with that specific title. And now you're asking me to share the deepest the deepest, darkest aspect of who I am. And I'm thinking as a black woman, not only that, as a black immigrant woman, people are gonna look at me a particular way. And I realize, you know what? She said something to me, she shared her story. And she reminded me that my story was never for me to keep. And this is something I've always been saying to other women. But when it comes to the reali realization and the shits in the fan, right? And you know, you're not going to have to really start living by what you say. I realized that there has to be one other woman in this world who is currently in the same situation than me, like me. I am not proud of my situation. And I can tell you this. I have done over 422 resumes sent out. Out of that, I have gotten, I think, three to four interviews one interview went extremely well two interviews went extremely well and i thought i would have gotten the job but these organizations went with different individuals and i was hurt by it i ain't lying i was hurt and i asked god why why do i keep putting myself out there to keep being rejected time after time after time and it just keeps on wrenching ring you know like when somebody stab you with a fork and they're wringing it in it or like if you're tying that if you're ever tied a t-shirt you're wringing the fork in the shirt because you want a specific design that's how it felt and i went in i went into depression y'all i'm telling you the truth to serious serious depression because i can't understand it each time i put myself out there i am rejected continuously and i decided for a while that i'm gonna stop because i couldn't understand but I realize if God has not given you the leading to do something, then, and you step out into your own accordance, you will get hurt. You will get burnt. And I'm not saying that you won't get hurt in general while serving Christ. That's not what I'm saying. But when you don't, when you're not obedient in the time or in the season that you're in, and you have, you're not doing what God has called you to do in that season or that time, and you do your own thing, then, you know, expect things like that to happen. So here I am, a black immigrant woman who is on welfare, not because she wants to, but because she has to, because what I'm currently earning, it does not sustain what it is that I want to do. 
and I'm not proud of it, but I'm glad that I have a roof over my head, food on my table, and I'm able to and I, and I am able to take care of my kids. And I realize that I need to be proud of me. No matter what my status is, no matter what my situation is, I need to be my biggest cheerleader. I need to be proud of me. And this is the purpose. This is one of the purposes why I created this program because I want women who look like me or in the same situation that I am in, you know, to understand that you no, know, you are great. There are great there is greatness in you. And no matter what the situation seems like, your 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 struggles are your 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 journey, the struggles are embedded in your story. And you just have to be willing to tell it. You just have to be willing to share it to empower someone else. And just to encourage somebody else. Because when you encourage somebody else, it encourages you. So I just want to encourage somebody else out there. Whether you're an immigrant or you're a black woman, whatever your status is. If you have gone through the same thing that I have, be encouraged. If you're living on welfare, be encouraged. Right? Because God has a way to spin things in a way that nobody else can and trust and believe people out there will speak that's the devil's work and he'll continue doing it he is good at his work so when you hear people talking and sharing their opinions it has nothing to do with you it's their opinion keep it moving keep it stepping because one day to come your story the trajectory of your story will change the trajectory of my story will change but in the interim in the meantime, girl, I am going to slay. I am going to do what is necessary. I am going to keep busy, keep being obedient to the most high God. Keep worshiping, keep praising, keep working, keep doing what I need to do until I get to where I need to get to. Because there's a belief system that you need to be at a certain point, at a certain age in your life. I'm 43 years old, y'all, and I'm not exactly where I need to be. And I've been beating on myself for years because society says, and I don't care what society says anymore. What God says is what counts for me, right? So I just want to encourage somebody else, no matter what your situation is, trust that God knows it all for you. And if you're not serving him, come on over here, right? Jump on this wagon because this wagon will not lead you astray. And as I said earlier, this is one of the reasons why I created this program because I want women to understand that your failures does not determine your character. It does not determine who you are. The things that you have done and gone through in life does not determine who you are. It just speaks to the circumstances that you had to go through within that season and that time. So, and the program that we do, we work from the inside out, right? I love fashion. I love styling. I love art. I love all of it because it gives, it gives me peace. And this is what God gave to me when I was going through my situation. This is what I give back. <coughs> excuse me, back to the women who are going through their through their situation. I am no longer ashamed of what I have gone through. My daughter reminded me last night, "Mommy, you are successful." Sometimes we cannot see where we're coming from. We only see where we're at, and because where we're at does not demonstrate where we want to be. We get flustered, we get depressed, we get weakened in the spirit. But the word of God said, don't get weary in well-doing. Do not give up when it feels like there's nothing to accomplish, That like there's nothing happening. Don't give up. God is going to work it out. God is going to make the impossible possible. God is going to open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open, right? See, I envision myself as a multi-multi-millionaire. Billionaire, if you may or if I may, <laughs> but at the ending of the day, God has to do his due diligence in me. I have to be ready because what we don't understand sometimes is that God is not going to give you a million dollars when you can't even manage a thousand. So God is going to see how good you are at stewarding over the small things that you have. And there's a lot of things that I had to change. I had to change my financial perspective on life. I had to change how I handled money, how I spent money. I had to change how I think. And God is still working on this because, listen, I will cuss you off. I will cuss you out in the blink of an eye. Yes. But that's not like God, right? I can still cuss you out in, 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 in any other way but to do it in love. 
it's, you know, there's a vast difference but i'm just telling y'all listen it is real you're not alone don't feel discouraged hold on keep fighting keep pushing keep on going listen never you give up no matter what it looks like no matter what you feel like no matter what the circumstances are keep going keep pushing keep exhausting you will get there and it will happen mark my words the covering lfc holistic fashion therapy is going to be one of the biggest things you ever heard of and it's going to touch so many different lives of women this is going to be my full-time job my full-time job because this is my ministry right so i love it i love doing it and the program is absolutely free to the women that we offer the services to so check us out on the covering llc check out our resources check out my um boss up now fashion planner check out my um lifted prior planner praying the word planner right and keep on stepping y'all you're beautiful you are beautiful you're beautiful today you're beautiful tomorrow you're beautiful always love you